Okay. Ma yeah. For those who already joined us, thank you very much. Uh, we'll just give it one other minute to see if more people join us and then we'll start. Just one more minute. Thank you. So, hello everybody, and welcome to this uh, webinar, a short introduction of our new uh, materials and, and new software that we announced uh, last week, if I'm not mistaken, during the LMT uh, Chicago virtual event. Um, so we're very excited. This is our second um, host or our second webinar today. Uh, we're very excited to see so many people attending and um, showing interest, of course, in, in our new um, materials and, and, and workflows that we are offering. Uh, we think it is very important, even though we cannot come together physically, that we still um, keep a good contact and, of course, communicate uh, very openly with our partners about uh, the benefits uh, of our new products, but also um, the important um, things to keep in mind when uh, talking about this material and definitely when using this material. And um, I'm not going to take too long of the time, so um, who else would be better suited to um, inform you about our, our new things and the technical uh, applications or the technical features about it than our senior application uh, engineer Menopot. Um, who you can see on the screen right now together with his presentation. So I think we are good to go. Um, just want to uh, remind everybody that there is a Q&A section in, the, in this uh, Teams program. So use it whenever you feel a question coming up, put it in the Q&A and we will uh, definitely um, try to answer it at least uh, at the end of the presentation. Menno, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you Stein. Welcome everybody, thank you for joining us. And uh, like Stein already mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit about our new material for splints and retainers. I'm very excited because uh, personally, uh, as an application specialist, I think we have a, a winner, it's a great material. Um, next to that, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, the new Denture 3 Plus color, classic pink, and we're going to touch briefly uh, on the new upcoming software release, the 3.1 uh, 3D Sprint software. So uh, let's get started with Nextend Autoflex. A Nextend Autoflex, it is a clear and transparent material. Um, next to that, it's uh, high break resistance, the perfect accuracy and the high degree of flexibility are the uh, unique selling points for this material. We have, of, of course, already la launched uh, different materials for, uh, especially for spins. Uh, some of you might know the, uh, the AutoClear and on the next end we have of course, the auto rigid. Well, some of the people, uh, customers, end users, I must say, uh, were um, not really satisfied sometimes with just the color, sometimes with the material property. So, and as always, we try to listen to our uh, 
resellers who try to listen to our customers. And um, that's why we um, created this uh, brand new Orto Flex material. Um, excellent print quality, long-term stability. Of course, as always, and very important when working in dental, it's a biocompatible class 2A material. The application, I already mentioned it, it's kind of as well, but this material is suited for all types of splints and for retainers as well. And this um, material will be available as of June 1st. Uh, it will be available in Europe and the US. This has to do, of course, with uh, the CE mark and the FDA uh, approval. Um, and after that, shortly after that, I hope uh, will be uh, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. Of course, we will also bring this material to all the other countries where we do business. Uh, but because of the registration, the paperwork involved, this will be a little bit later on uh, this year, hopefully. Um, but as soon as we have more information on, that, on a timeline, let's say, then we will of course, share this with the uh, with, with everybody, but of course also with the resellers in those regions. Now, when we use a material uh, with next material, we always have to mix it. Uh, the good news about this material is that it is very easily mixed. And the instructions for use, they tell you that to mix it or either by hand or either on the mixer that we also provide um, for only five minutes. So before getting started, it only takes five minutes to shake the bottle. So this material is actually always ready to print. It is not like some of the other materials that we have that for the first time use, you need to mix it for at least two and a half hours. Uh, this material is ready to grow. So that's that's one of the benefits, I think, of uh, the orthoflex resin. Um, we do advise you between print jobs to mix the resin in the resin tray like we do always with the resin mixture. This is not so much to mix the material, it's more to uh, see if there are no foreign bodies in the resin in the resin tray that could be uh, harmful for the printer, the print process or the membrane. So between jobs, please make sure you use the resin mixture uh, to see if there's nothing in the resin that could cause this, these problems. This is the bottle that we are going to use for the Nextend Ortoflex. Um, like I mentioned already, it is suitable for all types of splints. Of course, that's depending on the design you make. Uh, we all know that there are different uh, variations and thicknesses involved when you create a splint. So uh, suitable for all types of, of the splints. And it is also suitable for printing retainers. The color, it is transparent, almost colorless. Uh, there is a very slim uh, tint of, of yeah, grayish blue, but um, it's, it's difficult, let's say, to see, especially when you put it into the oral cavity. Uh, we've done a short clinical trial, and uh, when producing the parts, you can see this, uh, this, this very slight hint of color, but once inside of the mouth and after polishing, uh, then this color is actually non-existent. So, we're very pleased that uh, this material is actually almost colorless. The uh, print speed is 23 uh, millimeters an hour, which re roughly results in a uh, print time of two hours for a average sprint. We will print the sprint uh, vertical to the platform. I uh, will explain a little bit more in detail about this. Uh, but that actually means that you can print several pr uh, splints or retainers in a row five, six, seven, that's up to the size, the diameter the, the, of the of splints. But uh, five is, 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 let's say, easily achieved. But that means within two hours, you can print uh, five splints. Already mentioned it, but I'd like to uh, mention it once again, that uh, after five minutes by uh, shaking it by uh, the bottle by hand or mixing it on the, on the next step mixer, the material is ready to go. After that, you follow the instructions on the next and fifth and hundred, meaning that uh, after you have uh, sent the file from 3D Sprint to the printer, you follow the steps that are on the display. And we all know by now how that works. You uh, agree to uh, checking several things, and then you press the so-called start button, and then the printing process will proceed. Cleaning, cleaning of the material is the same as for all other materials. That means we have two cleaning cycles. With, uh, combined with the ultrasonic device. We have a three minute cleaning cycle that get rid, gets rid of the excess material that we will always have after printing. After printing, the, uh, some resin will stick to the part 
and that needs to be cleaned off. But this is done by uh, cleaning it in three minutes in either IPA of, or ethanol. After the three minutes, we use a second rinse in a clean, fresh IPA or ethanol bath to, uh, let's say, deep clean the part to get rid of all the small particles or leftover resin that uh, might be accumulated in, in, in small pockets. So the second rinse, clean alcohol. After that, very important to dry the part, dry the parts uh, in 10 minutes. Why is this so important? We have found that the IPA and the ethanol, the molecules are so small, they deeply penetrate the part after cleaning. And to make sure that these molecules are evaporated, for, evaporated from the part, we need to uh, dry them in ambient air for 10 minutes. Then um, you can continue with post curing. Post curing for this material is set on 30 minutes. Um, the difference here is that we post cure with the supports in place. I will touch base on that after a couple of minutes. And we make use, of course, of the LC3D print box. Now, some tips and tricks because, um, yeah, although it is a very good material, it has some small differences when it comes to the post uh, or the processing of the part. Now, um, the printing. It's not different than, than any other part. It's just generating an STL file, get it into 3D Sprint. Uh, but then there are some things that we have to remember. First of all, we generate the support bar with the width of three millimeters and the tip width of minimum 1.5 millimeters. And on the right hand side, you can see that bar in place after printing the job. Uh, we found that placing such a bar between the last molars of, in this uh, case, uh, Sprint, uh, gives more stability during the printing. And more stability during printing uh, means that we have less print failures, less warpage, less uh, um, or more accuracy, I should actually say. We're talking about the details, but we find it important that, uh, of course, we aim, aim to achieve the highest uh, accuracy possible. And we found that putting such a bar in place uh, helps. Um, the bar, as we might know by now, is very easily generated in the sprint. Uh, struts, they are called within the software, but it's just two clicks uh, with, with your mouse and then you can generate this bar. The default settings are the three millimeters and the 1.5 tip width. If you would like to change that for any reason, you can. If you want to make it thicker, which is possible, you can. But please do not go below the minimum that we advise you to go. Like I mentioned, you place the bar between the last molars, molars giving it more stability during printing and you generate supports by using smart supports. Nothing different there. Uh, you make sure that um, the part is orientated correctly. Uh, you click smart support and then automatically the parts are just two supports, I should say, are generated. If you have some supports on the inside of the spin or in critical areas, um, my advice would be not to delete them, but to move them. Um, so, uh, Let's say my golden rule is do not delete supports, change supports. So take one support and place it to another part of the sprint in this in this example. Um, if you want to add some supports for more stability, in uh, that uh, is possible. That's not a problem. For improved fit, um, the angulation of the part should be between 80 and 90 percent, like you see in the picture here. If you put it into 90 degrees, then sometimes you will have some supports on the inside, tilting it slightly up to 80 degrees, and I will uh, demonstrate shortly uh, after this presentation. Um, you can see that the amount of supports on the inside are gone or are kept to a minimum, and those supports that are on the inside, you can then place them to a uh, location on the printed uh, part or the, the STL file that is uh, not harmful for the uh, fit of so for improved fit, angulation with the labial side of the incisors facing towards the build area, and the angulation is uh, 80 to 90%. For best results, use the resin mixer to gently stir between prints after the resin has been sitting overnight. So if you want to leave the Ortoflex resin in the resin tray overnight, not a problem. Make sure that before you do the next sprint, you uh, steer the resin. Uh, like I already mentioned, it's not so much that this resin needs a lot, a lot of mixing, but uh, it, of course, it doesn't do any harm to mix the resin, but it's also because we want to check 
uh, for foreign bodies, like uh, small supports that might have been uh, broken off or something like that. Uh, and this is, of course, also to prevent uh, the resin tray, the membrane, from getting damaged. After printing, do not remove the supports. Now, this is a big difference uh, that we have here. We have seen that the supports need to be in place until after the post curing. So after printing, do not remove the supports, wash and cure the parts with supports in place. Um, we've seen that these supports throughout the whole process during the printing, but also during the post curing, give the part a little bit more uh, stability. And because Artoflex had a word already mentioned it, the, 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 um, the material is slightly flexible. So having those supports in place until after post curing helps with the overall accuracy of the part. Um, the important tip here, do not leave the parts on the machine overnight. We've seen that, although we are talking about microns here, but we've, we've seen that if you leave the parts overnight, then you can see that there's a sl slight difference between uh, parts that you would post process immediately after printing. So our advice with Ortoflex, if you have printed the parts, please also immediately post process. So continue with the process of cleaning, then drying, and then uh, with the supports and the supports bar in place, the post curing of 30 minutes. Verify proper cleaning methods, um, ensure cleaning solvents are not saturated and that the parts are dried for 10 minutes prior to post curing. Well, now I mentioned it before, but why is this so important? If you do not do this and there is IP or ethanol uh, in the part, together with the, the, the post curing uh, unit, the light that will penetrate the parts and also the heat that is generated in the curing oven, um, this uh, resid residual IPA or ethanol could cause harm to the material and the material properties. Uh, we've seen this, we've found out uh, the hard way, let's say, we especially have seen this with the surgical guide, transparent material, as we all know, and if processed incorrectly, so if that material is put inside of the curing box with the ethanol IPA still, uh, we're talking about molecular, um, on, on a molecular level, inside of the part, um, then this uh, residual ethanol IPA could have a uh, effect on the part. And what we've seen is on a microscope, it, it could cause micro cracks. So for all the materials, but also for the heat, make sure that you dry it before post curing. Then after post curing, uh, allow the parts to cool down. This Ortoflex has a really nice feature. It when it you, you warm it up. So let's say if you put it inside of somebody's mouth, the uh, temperature of the of the mouth will make it even more flexible but it also means that after the post curing because of the the warmth and the heat involved during the process the part is actually quite flexible directly after the the post curing so what we advise is to cool it down to room temperature that only takes a couple of minutes and then you can uh, start removing supports and finish the part when it comes to finishing there's no special tools or liquids or whatever required. Uh, the supports can be broken off quite easily. The, the strut or the support bar is uh, just easily removed with, uh, with your burr. And after that, you can uh, finish it, polish it with your normal tools. Now, again, cleaning, IPA, ethanol, I think I uh, already elaborated on that. But we always use the three minute solution to get rid of uh, the, the resin, excess resin, and then two minutes in a fresh and clean solution to make sure you really keep clean the part. And again, cannot mention it enough, dry the parts for 10 minutes. Then, um, very important, I think, is the post processing, the post curing. Um, not for this material alone, but for all the materials that we have. I try to keep track of uh, what other people are doing, and they always mention. Uh, the printer and how fast and how accurate, but they never talk about post curing. And uh, yeah, for me, it's one of the critical processes in the workflow. If you post cure incorrectly, if you under cure, the part might not be biocompatible. The part might not get the mechanical properties that we uh, we promise you. Um, for this uh, material, it's not really important, but also final color and color stability are achieved when you. Uh, Post cure. So post curing in the LC3D print box for 30 minutes with Autoflex, you will get the biocompatibility 
you will get the nice colorless material and you will get the mechanical properties that we need for uh, this application being a splint. Mentioned it already a couple of times, but for this particular material, 30 minutes of pore screwing with the supports in place, very important. Um, of course, this information will be provided on the label of the bottle. So each user will have this information in their hands when they are going to print uh, with Autoflex. In short, we have the material. The material is very user friendly when it comes to mixing only five minutes by hand or on the roller bench. And you put into the resin tray and let the printer do its job. And then after that, we have a first clean and a second clean. Part drying, important, and then we continue to post curing with the supports in place. Please, after post curing, let the part cool down to room temperature before you start uh, removing the supports and supports bar. And then, uh, if needed, continue with the finishing and the polishing of the part. If you follow these quite simple steps, then you end up with a nice end result. Now, design parameters. Uh, we will come with some more uh, design parameters. As you know, we work closely together with especially FreeShape and Exofab. So we hope to, uh, for example, for FreeShape to, to offer you the DME file that we have done with all the other materials. It's not there yet, but it will come. But for, the, for now, we know that the minimum part thickness is between 1 and 1.5. After articulation, so if you create a splint and you follow the steps in the software, of course, the, the let's say the, the, the jaw movements are mimicked, and then uh, some material is uh, taken away from the occlusal side of the splint. After this movement, after the reduction of the, these movements, the thickness should be uh, a minimum of one millimeter. Now, with Auto Rigid, that was more, it was a minimum of 1.5, and we, uh, we always set a bar thickness of three millimeters. And that shows you that this material is, let's say, has better material characteristics. So you can actually design a very elegant, very comfortable splint with OrthoFlex. You have to create the undercuts using heat maps. That's the same with, uh, let's say, all CAD CAM splints, printed splints. And uh, uh, I would like to uh, mention that the offset to the teeth, one of the uh, parameters that you, you have in the software, for the auto rigid, it was 0.05. For auto flex, you can uh, make this 0 uh, 0.03. Um, so what we found in the beginning, we used the same parameters uh, that we used for auto rigid. We used it on auto flex, and we saw that the spin was actually a little bit too loose. By changing the offset uh, to 0.03 millimeters, all of a sudden, all everything came into place, and we have uh, a perfect fit. It was uh, also, let's say, proven by a short clinical trial that we've already conducted. Short movie on uh, the complete workflow. digital workflow here made use of interoral scanner and designed then you can see the orientation of the part bar is already in place ports are automatically generated and you can see there is still a lot of room left on the platform for you to print several print parts No rocket science here. This is the same process as we have with all the other uh, materials. And we can see already here that we have, I think it's six pins in one pin job. After printing, continue with the post processing. Take the printed parts off the printer, off, remove them from the platform. You can see by making use of the punch tool, you can actually keep the supports and support in place without any problem. Cleaning. After cleaning, dry the parts, then continue. 
nice feature of the supports that are still in place. You can place them right during unit, make sure that all the way around. Finishing with the normal tools is whatever you are used to. Used. Nice flexible, not too flexible, but it's flexible, very flexible. Strict occlusion. Application. All right. Um, uh, after the short presentation, uh, the, I will uh, answer the questions if there are any, or Stein will, uh, of course, uh, also be available for this. Um, but I would like to continue to the uh, next topic, short topic, uh, but we have a new color for the uh, next tent, Denture 2 plus Denture based material, and it's called Classic Pink. Um, that, uh, yeah, we already had some colors, but with uh, this additional color, I think uh, we have now a, uh, the largest available color palette for Denture based materials in the market. The Classic Pink uh, is more let's say towards the american market the european market um, again we've listened to our uh, resellers we listened to our customers and they said well we like uh, some of the colors but we are actually missing a color that is uh, close to what we in vertex call color five color seven so we tried uh, to uh, create this color and i think we have a, a nice addition to the colors that we already had now the total color range offers six shades enabling you uh, to deliver a final product that closely matches the patient's gum for a natural looking aesthetic. Of course, this material is also biocompatible class 2A. It has the FDA clearance and is cert certified as a medical device for Europe. Then um, I would like to touch base on the upcoming new software release it will be released roughly uh, the 8th of june uh, it's not final yet but this is the last that i heard about the release of the software and um, as you all know 3d sprint runs a lot of uh, printers within the 3d systems portfolio there are not a lot of changes for the next end uh, system next and 1500 system but uh, one of the biggest changes that we have a lot of things are, let's say, behind the scenes. You will never even notice that uh, there are some change and improvement made, made. But what you will see is that with the stacked option that we have for our model material is that we have changed the supports and also we have changed the uh, supports support placement. So when I um, so when I first of all, uh, I would like to point out the change supports on the base. There used to be quite a thick bar. Uh, starting the job, uh, the uh, idea was that we would create a stable base uh, for, for printing the parts, but also a base that would uh, support the uh, next levels of support. So as you all might know by now, you can print up to four or five layers uh, of models on top of each other, making use of the Z axis that we have in the printer. Uh, and uh, we, we created a quite a robust and thick uh, support base. Now, that is not necessarily found, so we change that support base, of course, not losing any of the accuracy or stability during the printing, but it, uh, it is easier to remove. It saves you a little bit of material, so I think that's an improvement there. Um, in my opinion, and a more important improvement is the fact that we have overhanging areas that need supports in, in the current uh, software. This is sometimes not the case. Sometimes there are supports, sometimes it's not sufficient. And although we're talking about microns, we saw some accuracy loss, especially here in the last model. Now within the new uh, upcoming software 3.1, this will be supported uh, more, and therefore these, uh, the so-called sagging uh, will no longer be there. Now for this uh, occasion, I took a uh, part with a large overhang, therefore there is a lot of support. But uh, in general, you will see that there are four or five supports or tips on the last model. Another thing that changed is the so-called lattice structure. 
the ladder structure inside of the arch was normally flush with the backside of the model. And that was okay if the, fun uh, the functionality was there, but uh, the uh, print processing team and the software engineers in the US, they uh, tried to improve this. And what they've seen is that if we take this lattice structure and we put it four millimeters away from the model base, it offers even more stability during printing, resulting in the overall better accuracy of the parts. Again, the accuracy was already there, but we tried to improve uh, constantly. And this is one of the things that we now implemented in the new software to bring you this improvement. If for whatever reason, this ladder structure is interfering with your parts in the software, you can always return to what we already offer you. And that, that means you can already, uh, or you can uh, change the, um, the ladder structure if the distance from the model base. Questions, uh, I will uh, take your questions after uh, this short demonstration. You see, this is for the Autoflex. So uh, I would like to go over the steps quickly. Of course, we have the printer and within the printer, we have, of course, now the, so one back. we have now the new material in place, the next stand Autoflex. Uh, it's clear material, print mode, and then as we all know, the build style. And since there's only one, we have nothing to choose. We then click uh, select and set, and then you are ready to take in the parts. And let's see this one. It's the same as the one I think in the movie. I'm not 100% sure, but it's not really important. You transform the parts. First of all, get it in platform, and then we can orientate the parts. Now, let's say this would be 90 degrees. We tilt it a little bit, sorry. We tilt it a little bit like this. I'm doing it quite fast now, so see that I did it quite fast, but never mind. You can see that the, uh, the functionality creates structures here. We have the settings already, the width of three millimeter, the width of the tip, 1.5 millimeters. So by just clicking and then applying the strut, the bar, the support bar is already in place. After that, you smart support, create the supports, and voila, here we have it. Now these supports, they support the support bar. They do not interfere with the occlusal side of the splint. These supports that are inside, sorry, is because of did not spend a lot of time on the orientation. But if you want to get rid of them, you can just drag and drop these into a more a better position. Let's say I'm not going to do all of them, but after this, you can just update the supports, and you see that already here these supports are no longer in the on the inside of the part. So. That's how easy you can uh, just orientate uh, support and uh, actually get the part ready for printing. When it comes to the um, stacking, I've prepared some models here and we have the stack. And here in advanced, you can change the lattice lift at its default. At the moment it's four. And if I just uh, now click apply, you can see the same image that I've just shown you in the presentation. But if this ladder structure for some reason interferes with critical parts of the model, you can reduce it here. So you can bring it back to zero and then the ladder uh, structure, the lattice will be uh, flush to the bottom of the material. Now, click apply. And I've created a whole platform just to save a little bit of time. Waiting is always the worst part of a presentation. Here we go. You can do it. Okay, almost there. So you can see that this is now the difference between what we are at this moment offering you. Also here on the bottom, 
making the removal of the models uh, easier. And again, this letter structure inside here, let's see if you, that this letter structure is now a little bit higher up in the model, and this is for more stability during the printing. Also here we can see the support, so we'll bring it in closer. Bring it in closer. This is the uh, model that is, let's say, um, well, worst case scenario. Um, but I also want to get it real uh, in close because of the very small support base. Before, and this is exception, of course, uh, the autoflex, you have to keep the supports in place. But after, um, after the, the post process, of before post processing, you can remove these supports quite easily. Okay. That was it from my side. If there are any questions, now would be the time to uh, to ask them. Thank you very much. Um, oh, you already see me. Thank you, Mano. Um, I think uh, you went over it pretty good and fast. Um, we do have a, a few questions, maybe uh, questions that uh, were answered already during the presentation, maybe a little bit um, uh, coming too soon in the presentation, but one of the questions is, what is the minimum thickness we could print for a dental splint with the Orthoflex? Um, I think that you mentioned that, um, but I, I will okay. leave, leave it to you to answer it again. Yeah, uh, well, for, for me, one uh, minimum thickness 1.5 uh, is, is best, but you can go up to one millimeter uh, thickness. And uh, this is actually when it comes to uh, comparing it to, to other materials or to, uh, let's say, analog spin, this is very thin. Therefore, you can really make a, a very comfortable spin. But nine out of ten times, the thickness will be guided what, by what the dentist is offering you. You saw it in the movie. You see that there is a bite registration, and this is of course something that you will use for your design. But when it comes to the material properties, uh, one to one point five millimeters is the recommended minimum thickness. Yeah, thank you. Um, the, also, a question regarding um, Orthoflex. I think will it be possible to print in orthostacked mode? Do you want to take this, uh, Menno? Uh, you can try, but no, no, that is not uh, not possible. Um, stacked, yeah, it, it might seem because of uh, how easy it looks in 3D Sprint that this is something that we can easily achieve for other application as well. But it, that is a really lot of work. Um, we've worked, I think, almost two years on the ortho stack for the models. And yes, we take this knowledge and we use it for other applications in the future. But uh, no, at the moment, that is not possible, not recommended. But again, you place the part almost upright, so you can place four, five, six, depending on the, the diameter of the part. But uh, a minimum of five is absolutely achievable. And that uh, is, of course, already a nice uh, output. Yeah, absolutely. I think six to seven splints are possible, depending indeed on the on the thickness. Um, yeah. And and then you can print in one batch. Um, this is also not the fastest printing material that we made due to the little flexibility and and definitely during printing and 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 before post curing, there is definitely a, a little bit more flexibility in the material, which also uh, limits, of course, the 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 build speed that that you can uh, can give it. So it's not a, a super fast material like we have the tray material, for example, is one of our fastest, but also a model material can be printed very fast in the in the orthodontic build style or in the stacked build style, if you like. Um, this material, no, and, and then of course the supports um, is an important aspect of the printing and that is um, immediately, it's a nice bridge to the to the next question that we received. Um, and I'm also going to ask it to you, uh, Menno. Uh, the question goes, can I ask why the supports should not be removed after the printing and cured together? This should be done with all, uh, should this be done with all the materials is, is the secondary question. So uh, why, why is it that we have to leave it on the supports and is this something that is more general? Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, first of all, it is only uh, recommended uh, with the orthoflex material. And you already mentioned it kind of uh, the same thing that we have during the printing process also applies in the post process. The material is slightly flexible. So uh, we found that keeping the supports in place until the last moment, until after post curing, helps with the total process, keeping it stable throughout the entire process. To answer the second question, no, that's not something that we advise for all of our materials 
actually, I think that removing uh, the supports um, before post queuing helps. Uh, it's easy with the other applications. Uh, the, before post queuing, the part is still, let's say, what we call in the green state. So it is, it is easier to remove them. Some of the supports can easily be wiped off. So such a thing supported. So uh, in short, for the flex, yes, keep the supports in place for other materials, not necessary. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to switch the screen a little bit. Thank you, Menno. I think that those are for now at least, or there is another question coming in. I will come back to you in a, in a few minutes. I'm just mm -hmm. going to switch gears a little bit to the, the more um, um, commercial and, and regulatory questions. Um, for example, is this uh, material available or licensed in Canada or somewhere else? Um, I, I didn't say this at the beginning, but um, um, yeah, the let's say the the order that the materials both uh, next and Ortoflex and then and then your 3D plus classic pink will be introduced is that uh, the EU the CE uh, countries are now finished. So as soon as um, let's say next week normally we will start shipping the first material here. FDA should be finalized uh, by the end of this week. So so that will be almost the same timeline. Canada, Australia and New Zealand are the next uh, major markets that we um, attack, so to speak, or that we identified as, as the next ones. Um, that is um, all happening in the coming week, maybe weeks, depending for some um, uh, registrations or, or some uh, licenses are just an application that we have to submit. Some we will have to wait uh, on an approval. It's really depending on the market. Um, it's depending on the setup that we have. But we will, of course, uh, communicate with our partners in those markets um, in the coming week or if it's later in the coming weeks about the pace of um, our rollout. But EU and FDA markets, so CE and FDA markets um, should uh, is the first wave. And as soon as we uh, start shipping material, uh, which is normally next week or which will be next week, we'll go to those markets and then uh, Canada, uh, Australia, New Zealand afterwards. And then later we will look at other markets that have specific registration needs uh, on a case by case scenario, let's say. Um, and it will be prioritized depending on low hanging fruit, of course, everything that we just have to uh, apply uh, for, for the registration. Um, it will be different than everything that we have to do a complete filing and, and maybe some markets will have um, separate requirements that we have to look into. But uh, at this moment, um, this is kind of where we are. Um, let me see, there was one other question. Yes, uh, regarding this presentation, if there is a PDF available, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, this presentation is recorded. Normally you should all as a participant should get a recording afterwards. Um, if not, and also for the people that could not attend um, one of the two slots, we will distribute one of the two recordings to, to all of you. Everybody that registered for the uh, for this webinar will get a recording in the in the email. Next to that, I want to point out that um, we do have on our website nextend.com, sorry, we have a, a section what we call the partner portal. Um, so for those of you that don't have access to that portal or are not familiar with that, um, please send an email to the, the same email address that you use to register for this webinar um, and mention uh, that you need access to that portal. On that portal, we um, place all our marketing material, but also partner information, uh, including, for example, the, the video that Menno showed, the video that we specifically made for Ortoflex to show the whole process going from the design, scanning design, and then positioning, orienting in, in 3D sprint, uh, printing, washing, um, and everything. So the, 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 the real uh, go through. That video is available there as well as all of our, our marketing material, not only for the new materials, also all the other materials. We have a lot of information there, so check that out. Um, make sure the, uh, if you want to review, you will get the, the video of this webinar so that you can review it. Um, Menno, I'm going to take it back to you for uh, another question that came in. Um, have you tried 100 micron layer prints? Um, so that's, I think, also related to Ortoflex. It doesn't say it specifically, um, but yeah, maybe we can say a little bit more about uh, the build style. Uh, you know, 
it, it definitely took us a, a long time to really get it right uh, with this specific uh, material. So I think that you can confirm that, it, that yeah. we, uh, we have looked at different options, uh, a lot of options, and um, it's always a trade-off between quality and speed, for example. Yeah, that, um, that's so. exactly the, the thing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a lot of people are still think that 100 microns makes it uh, faster. That's not always the case. If you have a thicker layer, you always uh, also need to polymerize it on the machine for a longer period of time. So, um, yeah, we chose 50 microns because after all this testing, after all the uh, things that we always take into consideration, like the quality, but also the speed um, and thrust quality is number one. We found that with the 15 micron layers, we got the overall best result. Um, again, 100 microns, uh, it is not always faster. We have some materials that we, we, we tested on 100 microns and where and this is an example, this is not uh, the exact numbers, but if you illuminate layer by layer at 50 microns, it could be that half a second is, is enough. But if you increase the layer thickness, uh, then all of a sudden it is not one second that you have to illuminate a uh, double thickness layer, let's say the one on the microns, but it could be 1.2. And then after 600 layers, you are really slow compared to the 50 micron build cut. So um, yeah, we opt for the 50 micron because that gave the overall best uh, balance of speed, accuracy, stability during printing, etc. Yeah. Exactly, and, and and every uh, material is different and behaves different during printing. So not all materials yeah. will have the same possibilities in terms of speed, but also in layer thickness. Um, as we know that um, printing the 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 printing process itself generates quite quite generates quite some heat, local heat, and and some materials are very receptive to that. Other materials are are not so. So um, yeah. A lot of lot of things come in play when you are making build styles, um, and when we optimize it. So we we go through a very thorough testing, and and yeah, we have printed, I don't know, hundreds of splints and and scanned them and compared them, and we have color maps, and uh, it goes from very very accurate to very very inaccurate, <laughs> and this is where you learn from. So um, yeah, thanks for that question. I'm uh, actually happy that we could also a little bit discuss that. I don't see any other questions coming in at the, at this time. So um, of course, if anything else comes up or you wanna you wanna discuss um, the, one of these uh, materials uh, more personal, reach out to your uh, area sales manager or to uh, our application team. Uh, I think all of you kind of know the ways to to contact all of us. Um, We'd be more than happy to provide more information, but I think that this um, webinar and especially the nice presentation uh, by Menno um, shows it all and tells it all. So thank you very much. Um, still no other question coming in, so I think that we can conclude this webinar at this moment. So Menno, I want to thank you again. Um, yeah, it was my pleasure. And uh, like Stein said, if there are any remaining questions, you know where to find us. Uh, please reach out and we will uh, try to answer the, the questions as quickly as possible. All right. Much appreciated. Thank you all. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye.